Hello, this is Tanner Tick. This is day five. Lost in who knows where. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I think the apocalypse is hit. Uh, we better get this solder fume extractor up soon. Uh, if we don't get this up soon, our air supply is going to dwindle. Alright, so in one of my previous videos, I demonstrated to you the negative effects of soldering with no soldering fan or no fume extractor. As you saw in that video, all of those fumes were absorbed by those cotton balls, and the cotton balls almost turned yellow because of it. So that just goes to show that soldering fumes are not good for you at all. Now my old soldering fume extractor consisted of a few computer fans with a piece of activated carbon uh, filter on the front. And so when it sucked the air in, it was able to remove the solder smoke. But this was not very efficient, and this entire setup was super bulky, and it took up a lot of space on my desk, and it made things tricky to solder with, and I never used it really that much. And even when I did use it, it didn't work all that well, and I dropped it one time, and it broke one of the legs off, and I haven't used it since, and that was like a while back. So after all your guys' super awesome donations on PayPal to buying a new solder fume extractor, I went to Lowe's, and I spent like 30 bucks, and I bought some stuff to make an awesome one. So I got this big piece of dryer hose, and I got this metal dryer vent thing. What I'm basically going to do is make a fume extractor. It's going to be a fume hood. And it's going to suck out all those solder fumes and push them through this pipe. And it'll push them out into the wild blue yonder, out the dog door. Let's get started. Alright, let's start by cracking open this dryer hose. This thing looks pretty cool. This cost me actually quite a bit. Whoa, it's like a big snake. Oh my gosh, that just went everywhere. All right, this thing is definitely like a snake. It's a real pain to hold. It's like, ooh, snakey boy. Well, we're gonna feed one end out the doggy door. Put it outside. We're gonna take the rest of it, feed it along the wall to my desk. Well, it looks like that dryer hose is the right length to go up to my desk right there, but I'll need to make some room to introduce my idea. And first let me explain a little bit what my idea is. I'm not going to draw it out because that's lame. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot over this ham radio and another thing, and I'll take a hinge and I'll mount this little wood block on a hinge, so that way the wood block can move up and down. And then I'll mount this funnel thing on top, and once I mount the funnel thing on top, I will add fans to the bottom, and then I'll attach the top to that dryer vent extractor, so I can move this up and down, and I can use it as a fume hood to suck up solder fumes, and suck them, and push them out that dryer vent to the outside of my room, where they won't bother anyone. So yeah, that's my idea. First off, I gotta clean that up, because there's a bunch of junk right there that doesn't need to be there. Alright, it's time to get cleaning. You know what, actually, I'll clean that later. I'm gonna go eat right now, I'm hungry. I'm gonna go get some cardia solder or something. That stuff's good. I'll be back. Alright, that was some pretty good cardia solder. Now it's time to go back to business and clean this stuff up. So, this is my trash, electronic trash and stuff, and solder paste. And Alright, so now it's time to execute phase two of my plan. So what I'm planning on doing is, we'll scoot this hose out of the way. What we want to do is we want to mount this piece of wood to the desk right there. And when we mount it to the desk, we want to make it so this will sit right above where I typically solder. So maybe about right there. Now it's going to be on a hinge, so that way it can be moved up. Just grab a pencil, mark there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this little hinge right here to attach this wooden block to the table so that way it can easily be moved up and down. And to attach this hinge we're going to use a few screws. Now it's kind of funny where I got this hinge. 
Now the hinge that I found is none other than the hinge on one of these cabinets inside the garage. So as you can see, on this cabinet, there is a lack of a hinge. Wow, I wonder where that hinge went missing to. Certainly I didn't take it. Rest in peace, hinge. Rest in peace. Prime. We're gonna try and install this device onto my workbench. For now, I'm just bolting it straight onto the desk. So this hinge isn't exactly the highest quality hinge. It's still a little bit bendy. So I may go back to Lowe's and buy an actual high quality hinge later. But for now, I'll use this hinge that I got from the old cabinet. That hinge is probably 20 years old and has opened cabinet doors many, many times. So that's cool for now. But we need to get work moving on to attach the metal thing to the end and also the fans. Alright, so as you can see what I've done here is I've taken this metal thing and I've mounted it onto the wooden block via these two screws. So this looks very nice to me right now. And now all we gotta do is mount the front plate for the fans to mount on. This front plate will also help secure this metal piece in place, because right now it's a little bit flexible. So what I'm gonna do is basically use the drill and mount it on such as this, where this bottom screw will be held in here. This will be mounted to the bottom. I can secure everything with duct tape. I'm now going to use duct tape, and this is actual duct tape, not the duct tape that you think of, but this is metal tape used to secure ducts, the original duct tape. So I'm going to use this duct tape, and I'm going to put a layer on the inside to make sure that this has an airtight seal with the outside. Alright, now as you can see, I have tons of tape on here and everything is airtight. Add the fans. If you look on the fans, you can see that there is an airflow sign. I want the air flowing straight down. So we're going to stick these in so the air will flow straight down. And the air will flow into that duct and out the other side. Perfect. So this device looks pretty good, with the exception that it's a little bit too low. So I wanted to be able to adjust the height of this device, so that way I can have it at the optimum height, and be able to put it all the way to the top for storage. So, what I want to do right now is make a device that allows me to uh, vary the height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of wire. Now what I want to do next is use this... Uh, stud finder to find a stud in the wall where I can attach the thing to. So Perfect. So we can use this wire and wind it up around to put in here. Perfect. That looks good to me. Now it's time to attach the vent pipe to it. So the vent pipe is not going to be too hard. I've got all the stuff here. So I'm basically going to take this big, thick pipe. I'm just going to tighten this down. Looks good to me. Alright, so there it is. There's the device running over there. And if you follow the cable all the way down, there's the other exit for the ventilator device. And right now I can definitely feel that there's a breeze coming through here. Let's see if you can hear it on the microphone. Yeah, anyway, there's definitely lots of air coming through here. So let's see how well this works. I'll stick it out the doggy door. All right, so here's an example of it working. So I'm going to turn on the fan. And we're going to solder some solder. As you can see, the solder gets sucked right up in there. 
Alright, so I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but there's something interesting that's going on here. And I think it's because this fan is slightly stronger than this fan, and this fan is pushing air out of this fan and out. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So when I solder right below here, solder comes in here, ow. It's not doing it as much anymore. Hmm. Never mind. I think this is working good. Alright, let's try that again. I've sealed up this fan, so maybe things should work better. And it should also draw less current. Let's see. Oh yeah, that works much better. Yeah, this fan was really messing things up. So I think I'm just going to leave this fan covered up with tape. And just leave it with one fan running. Because running two fans, I don't think will work as well. As you can see, when I have this fire, I can light a tissue on fire inside my trash bin. And there's a lot of smoke. Well, this can put out that smoke. Sucks it right out. So although there's a fire burning in here right now, I don't really smell the smoke because all the smoke is getting sucked out by the fan. Oh crap, that's not good, that's really hot. Okay, my can is really hot now. That's should, probably should not have lit a fire right there. It's gonna suck out all that smoke. Oh gosh, that wasn't my smartest plan. This device will always also come in handy when I want to blow up capacitors. Because as you may know, when capacitors explode, they put out lots of bad, annoying fumes. So, let's test the effectiveness of this device on blowing up capacitors and the soldering fumes they create. Here we go. Oh, see? It just popped all the fumes. I'm going straight up into the capacitor bank. Alright, so thank you for watching. I'm filming this video on a new camera that I just got, which is a pretty cool camera, and so you may have noticed a significant increase in video quality. This camera is a lot better. So thank you to all of the people who donated on PayPal for this to happen. This wasn't exactly cheap, it cost me like 40 bucks to buy all the parts for it. But it worked so well. As you can see, it was able to suck all those fumes just completely out and through the dryer vent and out the doggy door to wherever the fumes go outside. So that is a very good way of getting rid of soldering fumes at your desk. So as always, thank you for watching and please stay tuned for my next video. Check that out. Like, our microphone got stuck on that dumb truck. Look at that. Microphone's stuck. How am I supposed to get that rig?